Executive Director of the World Food Travel Association based in Portland, Oregon. And on this beautiful June day, uh, we are going to be talking about Poland and food tourism in Poland. I had the pleasure of visiting Poland last month. I was a guest speaker at a university in Poznan. And uh, we have an ambassador in Poland who has joined us on the uh, show today. And I was really quite impressed with uh, everything that's going on uh, from the Polish food, the Polish drink, the Polish hospitality, and even the nature is beautiful in the history. So I thought, you know what, we need to do a show on Poland. So um, I'd like to introduce Kasia Janizuska. <laughs> I say that kind of close. Um, and Kasia is our uh, ambassador in Poland for the association. So Kasia, would you like to say hello? Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> hello. hello. And then we also have um, Malgorzata Rose, who goes by Sarna, and uh, she is the owner of Poland Culinary Vacations. Hi, Sarna. Hi, hi, nice to see you. Um, one of the things I appreciate about the Polish people I've met is that they often have short names because uh, I don't know if it's for your convenience or for non-Polish people, but it's so much easier to say Kasia or Sarna than your, your full name. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> So, Kasia, um, let's start with you because <clears throat> uh, I met you, well, I've known you for a couple of years and um, we've been uh, talking by email and things that you do for the association in Poland, but then I met you uh, at the airport in Warsaw and you brought me to Poznan and we experienced uh, Western Poland together. So tell us a little bit about um, what you do in Poland, what your, uh, what your work involves, um, what your, your day job is, and what you do for the association in Poland. In Poland, I'm, uh, it's a normal day. I work at the university, but I'm very passionate about food and food tourism because uh, at the university I work at uh, food department uh, and I like everything what's connected with food because I like eating. <laughs> And I like traveling, that's why I started to be an ambassador of uh, World Food Travel Association because I think that connecting these two things, traveling and food, it's really good composition. Indeed. Food and travel are something that everyone always loves for sure. And um, <clears throat> have you, had you been to Poznan before uh, you met me? You must have. Yes, of course, yes. Yeah, and Poznan is known for the, the croissants, right? Yeah, it, it, it's called Martin's uh, croissants. Yeah. And they are very famous, and they've got some uh, festivals about this croissant. But every part of Poland have different tastes, so you cannot find them in my city, which is called... <laughs> Uh, so in Poznan, it's really famous, yeah. So let's look and see um, where your city is, because I think a lot of people, well, first of all, let's show people where Poland is. Some people may not know exactly. So here we've got Europe. Can you see my screen? Yep. yep. And there's Poland. And Poland is really a huge country. I don't think a lot of people know that. <laughs> uh, I mean, look at that. And so um, now let's blow, get closer here. Okay, so... Now, Kasia, you're from this town here, right? Yes, exactly. Olsztyn, is that how it's called? Olsztyn. Olsztyn, Olsztyn. Okay, Olsztyn. And um, let's see, here's Warsaw. So Warsaw is kind of on the eastern side. And then Poznan here, and we took the train, and that was, what, about two hours, two and a half hours? Yeah, we can say two and a half hours, sometimes three. It depends. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and so here's Poznan here, and we'll... Um, look at some of the things that we experienced in Poznan. Um, the first thing we went to was Palas Mirzenchin here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got the website up now. And this is known as a wellness and wine resort. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this? I mean, we, we experienced it together, but um, obviously, you know, it's, it's something in your country. You should probably do the, the honors. Yes, in Palas Mirzenchin, uh, we had an opportunity to eat really good local uh, tastes uh, because um, they have some, oh, you can see this wine yard uh, and we could taste Polish wine. 
which is uh, really, really good quality. And of also, pairing to the wine, we could taste the food of uh, David Wagowski, and he was one of the, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> there he is, one of our contestants in Top Chef Polska. And the food and the wine pairing uh, was really nice. It, I was amazed. Um, I don't, and I think that was one of the biggest surprises is that uh, people don't expect wine from Poland. And even before I went, I was talking to a couple people and they just looked at me, you know, wine from Poland? Yeah, right. But, you know, Germany has wine, Czech and Slovakia have wine. Um, you know, it's, it's an, Austria has wine. It's not unusual. So I really, once I was introduced to it, I really wasn't surprised. And, and the wine there was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, you know, uh, the wineries uh, started to formulate a few years ago in Poland because it was a traditional drink, but uh, during our history, which was very rich, uh, we forgot about wine and that we can have our own. Mm. And now we are coming back to this trend. It was amazing. Um, we uh, met with uh, the one of the uh, staff there, and he took us around to the vineyards, and then we tasted the wines, and then we also had lunch. And here's um, this is David. Like you said, he's a top chef. And for those who are not Polish, David is spelled with a W in the middle. Uh, that's pronounced like a V. And uh, he's amazing. He's a really nice guy, really talented. And um, I think that what was really surprising too is that he's able to create really kind of a gourmet experience, but without all of the pretense, you know, it's very, very, um, very approachable, very down to earth, you know, just a really nice guy and really a, a casual experience. It, it was, a, you know, the whole estate feels very high end and very upscale, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't snooty is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And it's uh, what's worth, uh, to tell that now in Poland we are combining modern cooking techniques with traditional taste. So you can still feel the taste of tradition but in new form. So mm -hmm. uh, it's changing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at some of their, their wines here that we tried. I know we tried the Rondo and the Regent. Those were good. And then let's look at the, the white wines that they had. Um, Sarna, have you been to this uh, wellness resort? I have not visited Palac Mierzencin, um, but hopefully this um, summer when I'm there, I'll make a little trip over and, and can um, uh, sample their wines. But I, you know, I have visited many, um, many places similar to Palac Mierzencin across mm -hmm. Poland and uh -huh. their wines. And, you know, I, um, I'm pretty impressed. And this um, grape spa that they have, they use their own grapes and the, um, the things like the resveratrol and the grapes that are good antioxidants, they use them in their treatments there. And we, we actually went in and we were going to try and get a massage or something and they were completely sold out for the next day or two. Unfortunately. <laughs> Everyone loves pampering, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's, and it didn't feel like the resort was that busy. You know, it's, um, it's so big that you can really get lost. And it was, it was lovely. And then, um, so after we went there, uh, the next day we went to Folvark Vasovo. Vasovo. Yes. <laughs> I will speak, speak Polish one day. I will certainly yeah. try. And this was, um, how, where is this in relation to Poznan? Is this Northwest or South? I've never, I've never been there, so I, I can't tell you. Okay. Um, well, was it close to Poznan? It was. It was about an hour away. Here oh, we okay. Go. So it's so it's still it's still um, central west part of Poland. Then. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm getting the map, doing the Google map here. This is amazing that we can do everything in real time like this. Okay, so yeah. it's due west of Poznan. Due west. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And this is um, a pretty popular highway between Berlin and Warsaw. And, and Poznan is kind of right in the middle. It's about three hours to each place. I think it's maybe a little closer to Berlin, actually. Uh, so for people who are thinking about coming to at least that area of Poland, they could fly into either Berlin or Warsaw, both. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but this was a, a fun little place. This was an organic or, as you say, ecologic farm and um, a lot of historic buildings. Um, this was just beautiful. Uh, they've got, you know, a little lake there. They've got an herb garden. Uh, we had lunch. They make a lot of their own products. So they do a lot of the fermented things like um, the fermented cucumbers you're very well known for. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And um, then the cherry products, they, they had a lovely cherry conserve that they put on ice cream. Yeah. Which was quite nice. And then they do um, a bunch of different flavored liqueurs. Uh, so we had cherry, we had rose, um, we had currant. Um, there were maybe six or seven different flavors in all, and they make everything right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no. Poland, uh, we like to uh, eat food which is real, you can say real food. Mm -hmm. It comes from our tradition that we didn't have chemicals uh, in our agriculture, so the soil is uh, really clean, so mm -hmm. you can use them straight from the, uh, from the garden. Yes, we're very picky, very picky eaters. <laughs> yeah. We only want the best. <laughs> From our own gardens. I think yeah, when we were... also we use... yep. <laughs> Go ahead, Kasia, sorry. Also, we use some wild products from the woods. Uh, we go to pick up berries, we go out to um, pick up mushrooms. Uh, so, yeah, we've got really clean surrounding. <laughs> I, I did feel really clean. Um, the air was clean, the ground was clean. And um, this, I, it says here that this was a, um, a historic building, 15 historic buildings composing the farm. But I think that they told me when I was there that um, it used to be, it was occupied by the German soldiers. There's some, I don't know, there's some history going on there, but. Um, yeah, maybe because during the partitions, uh, this side of Poland was uh, the annexationist was the German side, the Prussian. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The Prussians, exactly. Yeah. Here's some more of the photos. Um, it was just really peaceful there, and they do weddings. Um, and they're looking at putting some some rose gardens in here. But this is the building I think that they do the weddings in. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw on their um, Facebook page, there was some, uh, someone had just got married there this past weekend. Um, let's look here on the Facebook page. Yeah, they had a wedding there. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Oh, and I, I remember the cat. We, the cat was yeah. um, in the dining room, and he was kind of laying on the chair like that. It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's, it's a really cool venue. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, Piotr, the guy, uh, is one of the owners, and um, really mm -hmm. nice guy. Really, um, he's really proud of what he has, and I think he should be. And, you know, the, the nice thing is that there are places like this, very charming, all across Poland in sure. different regions. So... Um, that you know, it's 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 not well known, but we have these amazing locales such as Folwark Wąsowo and Pałac Mierzęcin all throughout Poland. So mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a lot to explore. I'm just playing a video right now, and they've uh, set this up for a party. And look at the lighting that they can do. Yeah, really yeah. lovely, really special place. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, Kasia, can you tell us a little bit more about Polish cuisine? I mean, I, I don't think, you know, I certainly didn't know anything about Polish cuisine when I went there, and I don't think a lot of people um, outside of Eastern Europe really know much about Polish cuisine. I mean, you know, we would probably say, you know, pierogies and vodka, and, you know, maybe that's it, you know, the stereotypical things. But what, what it, from your perspective, what are you most proud of about Polish cuisine? You know, it's difficult to say one product which we are or I am proud of because Poland and Polish cuisine is really tied up to our history, which was really rich and uh, the cuisine went through uh, some metamorphosis during all these years of the history. So we've got some tastes from Germany, some tastes from um, Jewish who came here uh, from Armenia and Greek uh, merchants uh, and also some Italian tastes uh, thanks to Queen Bona who drafted uh, Italian chefs to Poland 
So in every part of Poland, you can feel another taste of Poland. Uh, you can also say that um, sometimes the Poland, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Polish food is described as middle of the road European cuisine because it's a composition of, of different tastes and every region has its own taste. Mm -hmm. And for example, in my region, which is full of lakes, we've got many fishes and that's the main uh, main product which you can find here, for example. Yeah. When you well, click on that region, Eric, you can, um, when you zoom in, you can, then the lakes will be more visible. Oh yeah, yeah. lots of lakes. Yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Town Kasha, huh? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a gorgeous say, region. We say it's a region of thousands lakes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and and Kasha, where's your house on here? <laughs> I want to zoom in on your house. We'll, we'll come visit and spy on you. <laughs> Somewhere near. You're yeah. really close. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see all the forests. There's just water, a lot of water and a lot of forests. Mm -hmm. It is. It's very nice. Now, let me, let me ask you something then. Um, when I was in Poland, um, we were talking about the different um, part cuisines in the different parts of Poland. So... Uh, people I was talking to, I said, well, you know, what are the best um, known cuisines in Poland? And they really had a hard time saying, they said it's kind of between Warsaw, Poznan, and Krakow, they thought were probably the best known food cities. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Krakow and Poznan and Warsaw, they're the biggest cities. So the cuisine, it's more... I could say maybe sophisticated mm. because they, con they concentrate some uh, marketing on some products. And for example, in Krakow, you've got bagels, which are typical for Krakow. Uh, and for example, in the south, in the mountains, you've got specific cheeses. Uh, you can show them. I've sent you some pictures. Uh, from our mountains, it's for example Ostipek or... Which one do you want? This one? Mm, this one? No. Yeah, the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are typical cheeses from the south, from the mountains, and you cannot find them in another region. Yeah, so in Krakow, yes, you can find them. Uh, in another region, for example, in Poznan, we talk about this Martins bagel, mm -hmm. uh, um, and in Warsaw it will be different food. Yeah. Let's see, I um, lost my ability. The, the St. Martins, they're more like croissants. Um, croissant. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. not bagels, mm -hmm. croissant. Mm -hmm. Let me get a picture up of that so people can see what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and they actually, um, yeah, this is the um, croissant uh, school that we went to. Oh, you did. You did get the presentation. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a lot yeah. of fun. Mm -hmm. like, yes, yeah, so the there it is. And this guy, I remember this guy. He was funny. He did one of the presentations. Yeah. So they did, learned, did they make you wear the chef's hat? Uh, well, we talked about that, and they had a pink one, and they were making fun of the boys and the girls. And, <laughs> and there's, there's. Um, this is really what they look like. They and they're big and they're heavy, which you don't mm -hmm. expect. They're really heavy. Yes, delicious. This is the company Ro Rogalo. Rogalova. Mm -hmm. Rogalova. Yeah, and mm -hmm. this guy was there too. He was funny. Um, they do tours in. Um, they had English, uh, Polish, of course, German, and they have a guy who speaks Arabic too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of fun. It was a really nice experience. Um, so, so we talked about the different influences of the different cultures and so on. And now we're talking about some of the characteristic products. Um, let's go back to the map of Poland. So we know that uh, those croissants are from this area. We know that the cheeses, some of the cheeses are here from the mountain area, which those are beautiful mountains, by the way. And your area is known for fishes. Warsaw is the big 
cosmopolitan city where you can get every cuisine and, you know, the high-end chefs. And I think, isn't there one or two Michelin chefs, Michelin star chefs in Warsaw? Yeah, we've got two Michelin star restaurants. Mm -hmm. One is Atelier Amaro and the second one is Senses. So uh, they're the greatest restaurants in Poland. Mm -hmm. And they are in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. Now, when people are eating out uh, in these other, these bigger cities, obviously they can um, have Polish wine if there's Polish wine on the menu. When we were in Warsaw, we saw Hungarian wine on the menu. So, so there are some other options of exploring some of the other beverages from the region too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we also say that we are the only manufacturer of mead uh, so because it was really traditional drink before the wine and uh, beer and mead. These were the drinks which you can you could find uh, during the history, and also we are now known for vodka, clean vodka. But mm -hmm. earlier it was liquor or tinctures. So we have also many varieties of tasty vodka or liquors. Tell me about the buffalo grass vodka. We bought some. I brought some home with me, but mm -hmm. I didn't try it yet. <laughs> oh, you haven't. You have to try it with the. Uh, yeah. With apple juice. <laughs> with apple juice, really? Okay. Typical and, drink. <laughs> what's that, Kasha? It's a typical drink to drink this with apple juice. Nice. Um, I also brought back some cherry vodka. I brought back two bottles, and there's only one bottle left. <laughs> oh, you like the you like the sweet cherry one? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. Cherries really, really well in Poland. It was delicious. Just amazing. Um, okay, so now obviously in the past 10 years or so, Polish cuisine has changed a lot. Um, Kasia, can you tell us a little bit about how Polish cuisine has changed in the past 10 years? Yeah, besides these modern techniques, we also came back to some forgotten products. Uh, for example, Jerusalem artichokes. Mm -hmm. uh, these are and the roots uh, which were in our ground all the time, but we forgot about it. Now we are uh, taking them uh, to our tables. And for example, game, uh, deers or bars, and now we are using again this kind of meat, not only pork, um, which was really popular during all years. Yeah. And yeah, goose meat. For example, goose meat, when we yes. have the national in the fall in November, we have the whole Poland eats goose meat. Yeah. Goose. Goose. Uh, we got also the picture of some goose leg. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, hold on, let me find it. Yeah. To the Dropbox. Which one is it? The second. This one? Yep. Yeah. And here, the up left, you've got the goose. And the other meats, uh, these are game, yes, it's a boar chick. Uh, mm -hmm. And also uh, down on the right, you can see eggs of snail. Snail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Poland, or yeah. Poland actually exports a lot of the Vinicic, uh snails to France. So if you're in France and you're eating snails, they could have come from Poland. <laughs> wow. Yeah. True. The, mm -hmm. the fr secret of French cuisine gets out. It's because yep. of the bowls. <laughs> yeah. funny. All right. Um, well, we're going to take a quick little break, and I want to tell people a little bit about our new business accelerators. Um, this is something that we've just launched, and we launched it um, recently because we saw a real need in the industry, um, a need from specialty food and beverage manufacturers who uh, perhaps need a little bit more business training, and for other people who are interested in the food and beverage tourism industry. And we've been uh, offering our certification program now for eight years. It's our most popular product. And we saw an opportunity to take it up a, a couple levels, actually. So we're offering these accelerator programs. And we've got um, some upcoming dates. The food and beverage business one sold out. We just completed that yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we've got um, two dates, September 25 to 27 and December 4 to 6 uh, here in Portland. And then food and beverage tourism, if that's your interest, we've got um, a class next month, July 17 to 19, mm -hmm. and um, October 30, November 1, and January 8 to 10. So if anyone is interested in those, all you need to do is go to worldfoodtravel.org training, 
and you can uh, see exactly what the curriculum is going to be, um, all of that good stuff. And uh, in fact, Kasia, we're talking about possibly doing that in Poland, right? Yeah. I hope we could do it uh, in Poland because uh, really nice, I think, uh, really nice uh, knowledge, mm. which we still lack in this knowledge in many businesses. And you know, it's interesting. Um, this, you know, you were saying that, that it's needed in Poland. I was in Peru in April as well, and they need it there. It's a it's a, a common need around the world. It's not something that's just, you know, for Americans or just for Poles. It's every country has, has this need, I think. Yeah. 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 Especially the food and beverage tourism, you know, it's it's definitely something that's changing and tourism is such a dynamic area. So um, I think all the, you know, the research that World Food Travel Association does in, on food um, tourism is, is, is wonderful and, and any, any country, any culture can benefit from mm. knowing the latest, greatest on it. Well, Sarna, since you mentioned the research, I was going to close with that, but I'll show everyone right now. Um, this research just came out last week. It's our 2016 mm -hmm. Food Travel Monitor, and um, it's 300 pages of goodness, uh, juicy wisdom. And if, if you're interested, you can just, um, you go to the homepage, go to education and research, and then um, you'll step through it and you'll get to the right page. But, you know, people can look at the table of contents here and see exactly what is included. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that's really interesting is the psychoculinary profiling, which every person has up to three major profiles, and there's 13 total that you can have. But also destinations can have a psychoculinary profile. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't do Poland this year, but I hope we will next year. I would say Poland is probably authentic and maybe, I don't know, there's, there's a couple different ones that it could be, but maybe we'll, we'll find out next year. Yes. So, um, Sarna, let's, let's talk a little bit about you. Now, let's shift gears. And mm -hmm. so you run Poland Culinary Vacation. How did you get started in um, creating a, a tour company to Poland, a food tour company to Poland? Well, um, it's really my love and passion for Poland, for everything Polish, um, Polish cuisine, um, Polish culture. Um, so it really, I launched Poland Culinary Vacations out of that love and passion for, for Poland and for travel. You know, I, I live to travel. Um, and uh, when I travel, I eat. I, I love to discover cultures through the kitchen. So, um, so this was, you know, born out of love for um, for my country, for Poland, for Polish cuisine, and uh, for travel. Nice. And so I pulled up your website here, and I see that you've brought you. um, broken things up by regions. Do you think visiting the different regions is the best way to to see Poland, or do you think you really just need to see the whole country? Well, I, I, from the beginning, just like Kasha said, you know, every region has something unique to offer in terms of cuisine um, and dishes um, and drink, unique drinks. So uh, from the beginning, I knew I wanted to focus on uh, offering uh, in-depth, unique, regional culinary and cultural experiences. So instead of, you know, having tours all over Poland, where you waste a lot of time traveling between the destinations and the cities. Um, I wanted to get to one region and explore it in depth. Um, you know, get into the countryside, uh, get with the local people, the markets, um, of course, do the cultural sightseeing, um, you know, the must-sees. Uh, Poland has a lot of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely wanted to, um, you know, focus on kind of a slow paced uh, way of, of visiting places. And Poland, like, as I mentioned, has so many unique, wonderful, quiet uh, places like the ones that you visited, um, palaces, castles, manors, uh, boutique hotels in the countryside, organic farms. Um, so it's, it's just, uh, you can really escape and, and uh, you know, have a true vacation, relaxing time. Mm. I think you really hit the nail on the head there. Uh, Poland for me was very peaceful. It was very calm. And I think that uh, maybe that's because there's, there's not that many um, tourists compared to a place like London or Paris. But, uh, you know, once you've been to those big cities and you've done all of the excitement and all the, 
you know, the London tube or the Paris Metro, you know, it's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but then you come to Poland and, you know, there's nature and there's the history is right in your face. And, you know, you can go to a big square in the center of town and there's people, but it's not, it's not like, um, you know, Trafalgar Square in London, where it's just crazy full of masses of people. It's, it's um, very approachable, I think. Yes, yes. And it's, it's very um, uh, easy to put together a tour in Poland, a regional tour, and, and combine, even in a week-long tour, uh, the culinary activities, the cultural um, active activities, you know, some of my tours um, include rafting, uh, easy rafting, depending on where we are, um, you know, when we're up north on the Baltic Sea, we do the, we get, we hop on a ship and we do some um, boating. So, um, you know, depends on where you are. It, it's something that, um, you know, it's, it's, I think the key is to show people um, how diverse um, Poland is and you know and, and and present them with the best activities for a given region yeah i think that's one of the misconceptions that people have is that oh you go on a food tour and you're eating 24 hours a day seven days a week but that's mm -hmm. you know you can't eat that much so you've got to have activities in between so i'm sure you see museums you do nature hikes what else do, can people expect on your tours yes we do we do three cooking classes um during the week uh two are in the countryside of poland with uh, local housewives um and then we do one with a professional polish chef in a city so um so yes there's you know the, the cooking classes are in the morning and then in the afternoon we we do the sightseeing um there's dining uh at night we don't uh, you know for those people who do not want to go and, and join us at a, at a dinner, then they can stay, um, you know, behind and, and relax. And uh, uh, because many of our uh, stays are in uh, boutique hotels, so, uh, and many have wonderful spas, so they can, um, you know, book a massage or go for a swim in a luxurious spa. So um, again, it's, it's a very much, and you're in a small group, um, six to 12 people maximum. So, um, you know, I always tell my guests, it's your vacation. You um, do and um, enjoy, um, you know, every moment. And um, we offer, I guess, a lot of flexibility. Nice. Well, um, I looked at your uh, ratings on TripAdvisor and they were very good. So clearly your, your tours are very popular. Um, how did you get started in, in food? I mean, were you, were you taken into your mom's or grandmother's kitchen as a young girl? I mean, how did it get started? Yes, I grew up in Poland. Um, uh, when I was growing up, I come from large family on both my dad and my mom's side. Um, you know, whenever we had celebrations, um, first communions, weddings, we would, um, you know, cook together um, and, uh, you know, be involved in, in uh, community events, festivals. Um, so that was definitely uh, something that, you know, exposed me early on to baking, to cooking. Uh, my grandma Maria was a phenomenal uh, baker. Um, you know, I just her cheesecakes and uh, uh, anything she baked was just to die for. So um, I aspire to be a good, as good of a baker as my grandma Maria. Um, so um, and then, and then when I, uh, in my professional career, I, uh, when I travel the world, I was always really, um, uh, I had, I enjoyed and had the best memories when uh, local people would invite me over to their homes and cook a meal and I would dine with their families. Those to me were more memorable moments than, you know, going to a fancy restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, although I enjoy that too, but it was just the intimate family meals. Um, so I definitely, I knew that when I started Poland Culinary Vacations, I wanted to incorporate that into the program. Um, just to you know make sure that um, we had those um, uh, intimate family meals you know you're absolutely right those um, kinds of experiences where you are living like a local I mean I, I love um, those those high-end experiences too I mean the the food that we had with David Lagovsky was definitely like that but then 
Um, there was a colleague, he took me to um, a pierogi restaurant in Poznan. Um, it, it means tasty in Polish. Smaczny. Smaczny, yes, yeah. yes. And right there on the square, and it was wonderful. And it, it was like a little kitchen in someone's home. And then they were also mm -hmm. innovating with pierogi. So in addition to the standard, standard boiled ones, they had baked ones. They had different fillings, so they had things like um, goat cheese and, and red pepper and, you know, things that you wouldn't expect. So they're really trying to innovate there, but... Um, yeah, pierogies, you know, pierogies are very special. Um, every Paul loves pierogies. And um, in fact, one of my trips, um, the August trip that I have in Krakow is scheduled around the annual pierogi festival. So um, if you want to taste the best pierogi in the world and all kinds of pierogi. Um, just, you know, that's the trip to to make is is uh, is the one in August in Krakow that, nice. that is scheduled around pierogi festival. Okay, now I have to ask you both, what are your favorite Polish dishes? Kasia, let's start with you. I would say pierogi. <laughs> yeah. See, I told you, I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. And what flavor of pierogi do you like? Oh, I love every flavor uh, with meat and also with sweet fillings with mm -hmm. cheese and fruits. There are so many varieties that you can eat them every day. <laughs> nice. And Sarah, what about you? What's your favorite? I would say, you know, well-made pierogi, homemade pierogi, um, like the ones my grandma Victoria made, um, the Russian pierogies, they're called Russian, but you know, I don't know where, <laughs> why they're called Russian, but they're with potato and cheese and, and uh, lots of pepper and, um, and sauteed onions. They're, you know, if they're made right, um, they're the best in the world. And then I would say Polish soups. Um, mm. You know, now in the summer you get the chilled soups. Um, uh, chłodnik, they're called chłodniki. Um, they're amazing and then you know the borscht the pickle soup um yeah it may you know shtaviova uh sorel soups um so i think polish soups you know we, we children um are raised um on soups in poland we have to eat them uh as children <laughs> without exceptions our parents make us eat um soups so um i think that you know it's it, our soups are phenomenal they're the best and and they're very healthy because they have a lot of vegetables so um my light the light in my office um it's an automatic so it turned off should i turn it back on yeah <laughs> it, it was a little dark i'm just trying yeah. to find my um pictures from my trip i'll turn it back on and um because i think that here we go yeah let me okay i'm going to share my screen again i found my pictures mm -hmm for my trip and what soups did you taste when you were in Poland? What did uh, you go to? This one, this one is what, one of your most popular ones. Oh, um, Zurek. sour soup. Yeah. Okay. That was absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. Well, how's, what's that made of? It's well, fermented rye. Uh, usually it's made from fermented rye. It's kind of like a starter, you know, like um, like you would make rye bread. Okay. But there was more in it. There was some bacon or something too, I think. Mm -hmm. You can add bacon, white sausage, hard-boiled eggs. So, um, but yes, this is a very much uh, Polish soup. Like if you would, you know, say what's a typical Polish soup, definitely Zurek. Yeah, yeah, Jurek. And then, Kasia, do you remember the soup that we had at that restaurant with the, the clear borscht that night? Uh, I think it was, uh, oh, I don't remember. Because you've also uh, had opportunity to eat Krupnik, uh, mm. which David served us. Oh, I love Krupnik. That's like one of my favorite soups, too. <laughs> This, I remember this borscht because um, I'm kind of weird about beets. I don't normally like to eat beets that, that much. Sometimes I do. But mm -hmm. when you talk about borscht to us, it's a thick soup and it's um, really heavy on the beet. And this was more like a broth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was also uh, with, probably with uh, made from fermented beets and it was sour because of this uh, fermentation so it's really tasty and it's clear mm -hmm. um, 
can serve it, as you can see here, with some pastries or... It's a croquet. Was it a mushroom croquet? I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you see the steam coming off the soup, though? That was amazing. Yeah. This is the typical soup we eat on, um, on Christmas Eve, for Christmas Eve dinner. Okay. Yeah, that was a very... That, here we are at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. This is in Poznan. Yeah. And um, there we are. There's Kastya right there. Okay. Karina and this Marcin. And this, this was nice. This, these were stuffed apples or something. Um, yes, because um, we were eating duck and we serve ducks with uh, apples. And I think yeah. these were also with some cranberries. So yeah. these are great. Sweet. Is this Ratushova? Was that Ratushova restaurant right on the market square? Yes, it was. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah. And here I am with David, and he's showing one of his dishes here that he made. Yum. Yeah. <laughs> Make, it's making me hungry. It's amazing. And here we go. This was the dessert that he made. And he was oh. talking about these, these balls and how he makes them. They're not easy. <laughs> yeah. Molecular, you know, a lot of Polish chefs are actually um, combining molecular um, uh, cuisine, you know, into Polish weaving and into the Polish um, kitchen. So it's, it's wonderful to see that. Mm. Here's here's the soup that he made um, right there, and Kasia was that a was that a carrot soup? No, it was corn soup with some local cheese. That's right. It was corn, mm -hmm. yeah. corn. It was really unusual. I mean, in a good way. It was delicious. Oh, oh, is that like what was it? The um, tvaruk? Was it with tvaruk? Uh, yeah, but uh, salty one. <laughs> oh, salty tvaruk. Okay. Yeah. And one of the things that you see a lot in Poland is rapeseed oil. And this um, Polish Majenci makes their own oil and they infuse it with leeks. Yeah. So, you know, you think, oh, that's olive oil with basil, but it's not. It's rapeseed oil that they've made yeah. themselves with leeks. And Did you like the taste of it, Eric? Yeah, I do. I love leeks. I think it, um, mm -hmm. leeks are lovely. I think, though, the rapeseed oil is um, it's a lot lighter than something like an olive oil. Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't have any typical taste. Uh, yeah. For example, olive oil has some taste, and uh, this oil you can infuse with every taste you want because it's so versatile, so it can mm -hmm. compose with everything, and nutritionally it's really good oil. Yeah, very healthy, yes. Yeah, here's the presentation I was giving. At, mm -hmm. That was the Puro Hotel in Poznan. That was great, nice little yeah. hotel. And uh, oh, the the pastries! You guys do pastries so incredibly well. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the one thing that people need to know about Poland is the pastries. Yes, that's my downfall. When I come to Poland, I can't have enough. <laughs> that's uh, yes, it's and you know in Warsaw especially, you can go crazy. With I mean, pastries. look at that! Look at that! Um, mm -hmm. This was the Toga restaurant in Poznan, okay. and. Um, I mean, oh, just it's rhubarb. It's a rhubarb cake. Yeah, oh, I think it was. That's mm -hmm. um, something else. But yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely. And the hospitality, the people are just so genuine and so kind. And that's something, you know, I don't think people expect. Um, you know, I think every country has kind of, oh, there's Piotr from uh, the, uh, the farm. And that's the ice cream that had the cherries on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I told him he didn't have enough cherry. He needed to add more cherry to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that people don't really expect uh, how, you know, how it's going to be. I think, I don't know, from my perspective, I thought it was a little hard because there weren't a lot of people who spoke other languages, you know, and I'm not saying they need to speak English, but, you know, people, some people spoke German, um, and obviously some people spoke Russian, but uh, mm -hmm. most people were just speaking Polish. And, and, and um, can you, Sarna, since you operate tours to Poland, can you talk a little bit about the language issue? You know, it's um, the younger generation, um, you know, Poland now is uh, a member of the European Union. And um, ever since the fall of um, uh, communism, English was introduced in school. So the younger generation for like, 
I would say 20 years plus English has been taught to children. So, you know, the 20 something year olds um, and younger people speak English in Poland, the older people, you know, not, um, not so much um, unless they've traveled or, you know, they're teaching or something. Um, but, you know, as far as tours, um, has never been a problem, especially in the kitchen, as you know, once everybody gets in the kitchen, it's like, you kind of, uh, you do a lot of gestures and, you know, uh, but we always have uh, an, a, a guide uh, who's, you know, speaks English and, um, and for sightseeing, same thing, you know, those are guided um, uh, tours uh, with a English speaking uh, certified um, expert guide. So um, there's really not, you know, a problem um, as far as um, the language. And like I said, now the younger generation, they not a problem, you know, they, they speak Polish. And um, I even have chefs that I, um, I work with in, in certain uh, regions of Poland, where the, even the chefs um, do the the cooking classes in English. So um, nothing gets lost in translation. So it's, it's really nice. Mm. I think that's true. Um, I was observing that the people who were younger did speak English, but you're right. If you're with a oh, little dog on the street, mm -hmm. if you're um, with a guide, you absolutely do not need to worry about uh, a language at all. And Piotr, the, the guy from the farm I was showing you with the, the cherry dessert, um, mm -hmm. I was speaking German to his father. And oh, he didn't yeah. know English very well, so we spoke German, and it was fine, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I love that picture you have of the lazy cat. Yeah, that was just amazing. <laughs> so we walked into the restaurant there, and then there was the cat just kind of laying there, <laughs> you know. Oh, I love it. I'm I'm a big cat fan. I love cats. And he was adorable, and you know, you <laughs> try to find that in an American restaurant, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you see that a lot in Europe. I've seen that in Greece too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, kids are important. They, you know, they keep the mice at bay. They do. Not that there would be mice in that restaurant. I am not making it. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. So we need to to start wrapping up here. But I think that um, what I'd like to just say is that I think Poland offers a um, an amazing opportunity for people who they've done the Spain, the France, the Italy. You know, they've done all the big food destinations. They've been to London, Paris, Hong Kong. Uh, New York, and they're looking for something different. You know, that's one of the things about foodies. We're explorers, and we like to to always um, experience something new and different. And Poland really offers that. I mean, I think that um, whether someone comes on their own or for business or as part of a tour with Sarna, for example, um, you're going to have a great experience. The hospitality is there. The food quality is there. The variety is there. The, um, the sense of discovery is really interesting. You know, these were the alcohols that I talked about, you know, like a rose liqueur. Now I make a rose martini and I make my own homemade um, rose vodka, but I, you know, yeah, yeah, with organic roses here. But see mm -hmm. here were different ones and I, I forget which one was the rose one, but you know, that going into a cafe and seeing all these mm -hmm. things and, you know, it's kind of exciting not being able to read these labels because you can just try them all. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I can see Gruszkówka, Pigwówka, <laughs> yes, Piatu Zoo, yes, yes, yeah, so you haven't, you haven't tried the um, rose petal jam? No, no, I didn't try the jam. I think I brought one home, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think also, too, for people um, who are visiting Poland, Poland is not an expensive destination. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, Prices are very fair, and I think, you know, the quality, the value for money that you get is very good, and I think mm -hmm. you know, it's a really interesting destination for people who are looking for the, uh, that, that new kind of experience. Right, and, you know, we don't have the euro yet, so now it's really good time to come to Poland before um, we adopt the euro, um, because there's, you know, a talk about Poland adopting the euro, so definitely come now when, before the euro is introduced, when we still have the Polish Zlotyn. When I was, the people I talked to, though, they, they thought they, Poland was not going to get the euro. Do you think they will? Well, who knows? I mean, it, it's, it was actually supposed to, I think, this year, but, you know, it's still postponed. So it's a, you know, it's a good thing. I know most people don't want, don't want the euro because it's going to well, make things expensive. It, that's exactly what happened in places like Italy and Greece when, mm -hmm. you know, you had something that was, you know, 3,000 lira in Italy, which would have been about, you know, $2. And then now that all of a sudden it was three euros, which is, you know, a lot more. 
Um, right. You know, it's, it's almost 50% price increase and that was overnight. And, and the local people suffer too. Yes, definitely. Definitely. But yeah, now it's a really good time, you know, especially this year, the dollar has risen up against the Polish Zwoty. Um, so if, you know, if, if you haven't made your summer plans yet, summer, fall, definitely um, come to Poland. Kasia, do you have anything, um, any further thoughts to, to leave us with today? Yes, please come and visit our country. <laughs> it's really, really full of tastes and experiences. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a, lovely, a lovely experience. Um, in the Warsaw Airport, I thought it was really well organized. Um, and people can take trains as well. You can take the train from Berlin. You can rent a car. That was not difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you can, yeah you, it's really easy to get around Poland by buses. We have these really nice uh, buses now that offer Wi-Fi. Our train system um, has been greatly improved within the last few years. Um, so yeah, there's there are beautiful biking areas if you like to combine you know culinary with biking. Um, in fact, one of my ideas is on uh, in the northeastern part of Poland that Kasia's from uh, in um, Mazuria and Podlasia is to do a culinary tour that will for active uh, participants will combine uh, biking on the green um, velo biking trail. That's running through the eastern part of Poland. So, um, you know, again, you can just really, you know, bike from these beautiful destinations and uh, stop and taste the food along the way in agrotourism farms. Um, you know, enjoy the nature. So, um, just, just uh, amazing, amazing places. And you know, you're not that far. I mean, you can fly into Warsaw from anywhere. It's so mm -hmm. close. Great international connections. I, I flew in from London, almost missed my flight, but I made it, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, most um, major cities across Poland have um, modern uh, airports now from, you know, Gdańsk to Wrocław uh, to Poznan. Even in, um, even in so. Austin now we've got an airport, so you can go straight to the Thousands Lakes region. Oh. Yes, I think now they started actually, they started a flight from Wrocław to Olsztyn, right? For this summer? From, yes, and from London now, so okay. the connections are building. Oh, that's good. You know, when I was looking at coming, um, if I flew lots of Polish airlines, the, the connections were very good. But um, because of my airline system, I'm on One World, I was flying British Airways, and it was a little trickier. I really could only fly into Warsaw. Um, I could not connect on that network to Poznan. I would have had to purchase a separate ticket. So I think for people yeah. who don't fly a lot to Polish airlines, mm -hmm. um, you really need to just come into Warsaw and then plan your trip from there. Um, but, you know, like I said, it was super easy. Um, you can take the train from the Warsaw airport to the main train station downtown. The tracks are very clearly marked and it doesn't matter that you don't speak Polish because you can work up the letters and figure out where you're going and, um, get your ticket and you know, away you go. Exactly. Um, I'd like to go to this, the mountains in the south next time. I, I love mountains. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Krakow, I think that might be the place to, to visit next time. Definitely. I think you would really enjoy it. And you know, it's the home of the Highlanders. Um, they're called Gurale, and it's the cheese that Kasia was talking about on the smoked sheep cheese. Yeah. Um, they actually make it, and we on my uh, tour, the Cooking Your Way from Krakow to Zakopane, we spent um, four days in Podhale region where the Highlanders live, and we um, cook with them, we dance with them, we dress up in their costumes. Um, it, it, they're fascinating people. Nice. Um, just very proud. Nice. Um, have their own dialect and, and um, you know, beautiful songs and, and cuisine too. Lovely. Well, um, Sarna and Kasia, thank you very much for spending some time today to um, share your love of your country and your food with us and the rest of the world. Um, I'm definitely looking forward uh, to my next trip to Poland, and um, I hope that uh, we can do more to help Poland get on the radar for people. I know that the Polish Tourism Office is uh, working on some things. There's also the Poland Culinary Tourism Association, 
which um, is a relatively new organization, and they're working on some other projects. So hopefully in the next year or two, we'll see a, a lot more availability of information and resources to uh, travelers coming to Poland. Yes, definitely. We, we think the, the country has so much to offer. It's so beautiful, and it's, it's in a central location in Europe. So, you know, you can come to Poland for a week and then go to the, you know, Prague or Berlin or, you know, it's just, you can just uh, easily do two weeks in Europe um, and, uh, and not have to travel very far. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarna. Thank you, Kasia. It's good seeing you both again. Thank you. All thank right. you very much. Yeah. Bye. Cześć. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Next month's Food Travel Talk TV will be about India, the subject of India, food in India, and dining in people's homes, which we talked about today as well. So hope to see you next month. And just look on the World Food Travel website for dates and registration. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.